In ancient times, much of South Idaho was underneath the lake known as Lake Idaho. But some two or three, I forget how many million years ago, it busted out its dam at Hills Canyon and dried it all up. It left behind much evidence of its existence, a fossil record, sandstone deposits, and the shoe fly oolite. And can we stop shooting everything? This is why we can't have nice things. The shoe fly oolite are well below the high water level of Lake Idaho, but they were formed at the water level, which means the shoe fly oolite formed sometime when Lake Idaho was receding. Oolite, or egg stone, is a spherical sand grain which somehow combines to form these almost unnatural looking natural stone sculptures. There's a loop trail through the shoe fly oolite. It's about a mile and a half, but you can easily walk more than that. I've noticed that when people go up to the oolite rock shelf, they tend to stay right of where the trail enters. But if you want to see the cool stuff, you got to take the trail left. That's where you can find the Idaho Arch, as grand as any arch they have over in Utah, except it's really only this big. You can also find the Idaho Sphinx. Word is that the Idaho Sphinx was the inspiration for that Sphinx they got in Egypt. The Idaho Sphinx is of course the symbol of freedom for hashtag greater Idahoans everywhere. Freedom! The cozy crevices of the oolite are the perfect habitat for the adorable desert dwellers, the Crotalus organis, which we just call Rattlers. Like this one I almost walked on. He weren't having none of it. So if you're going to be out in the old light in the heat of the summer, take note of where you're stepping.
you're in the Boise area, the shoe fly Olight is an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 45 outside of town. Uh, you could stop and check out Bruno Sand Dunes and or the Bruno Canyon Overlook. That would make a great Saturday. Bring lots of water and have fun out there. The end. <laughs>